All right. So it had come to my attention that a lot of people could use maybe a little bit more extra guidance on kind of a more streamlined way to use sort of use SymPy to look at sort of a variety of calculations, then how to plug numbers into that in an easy way and how to transition that in a nice and easy way to um, something that you can actually plot or like something that's actually like a numpy function. Um, and so I just thought I'd walk you through sort of a quick example of kind of maybe sort of uh, my sort of process um, if I was trying to approach a problem like this. So say we just have basically a general um, one-dimensional uh, damped oscillator type problem. So I know the general solution looks something along these lines. This is actually a function of t, so we can do that. I'll apologize for my noisy keyboard because it's going to be noisy here. Um, and so we have this particular function, we know what its initial conditions are, and then we have these basic parameters that characterize the system, like the damping coefficient, which we'll talk about, um, and then your spring constant and your mass. And so say my plan was I wanted to be able to plot the motion of this over uh, the first 10 seconds or so. How would I go about doing it? Um, so in order to do that, I'm going to need to basically solve for what those unknown constants are. I'm going to need to plug those back into my equation, and I'm going to need to make sure that that's a function so that I can actually plot it nicely in Matplotlib in this case. So starting things off, I would of course need to import everything in. I usually do this um, manually um, just because it helps me better keep track of what stuff I've actually imported into my project. And of course, some styling. So if you'll do the style I use as C4 dark grid. And we better get senpai as well. So import senpai. senpai. <clears throat> All right. So at this point, um, I'm going to need to solve for constants first. To me, that is a symbolic thing. I need to solve for like what A and B are going to be. So I'm going to be starting off in senpai land. That said, I still kind of want to keep track of what these particular constants um, are, and it might be helpful to know what these are as well. So I'm going to go ahead and define those in the beginning as numbers, and then I'm going to sort of override a few of them as variables later for the purposes of SymPy, and we'll talk about why that might be. So just plugging in my constants here, so I have them. So beta is 0 0.2, k is 30, m is one, which means omega is uh, square root of k over m. That's all that good stuff. And then we'll say um, x0 is 10 and v0 is 2, just so that we have them all down. And then what I'm going to do here, and this is largely something that I find really useful when doing symbi type problems, is because usually with symbi type problems, I want to work mostly with the symbolic values. But then inevitably at the end, like I want to plug in all the numbers so I actually get like a numeric solution. Um, and one thing that's really handy is to basically, if we just sort of define ourselves, a little dictionary that has all of these values in it that we can then substitute in to our SymPy expression like all at once later. So I tend to call this like uh, consts. And it's a dictionary, so that's with squiggly brackets. And then we just need to, for a dictionary, it's always a key and then the thing that it equals. So we're just going to make a key for each one of these constants so that then we could sort of call it from our dictionary really easily if we needed to. And I'm mostly going to focus on the beta, k, m, and omega. These are initial conditions we're going to take care of later anyway. So I'd have something like a beta. That is not a, there we go. Um, always use colons in dictionaries is like the the key equals the thing. So that's, I can actually just do it this way. Commas between them, so k is k, and m, unsurprisingly, is m, and omega is omega. And this is really just setting it up so that I can do these um, substitutions just a little bit easier down the line. So then the other thing that I might as well start off by defining is, now that I have all this stuff out of the way, 
might as well go ahead and define um, what symbols I'm going to be using because I'm going to be doing this all symbolically. So in that case, I'm going to say I'm going to have beta. See, I'm going to redefine these, so they're going to be symbols now. K and M, sim.symbols, beta, K and M. And I like to go ahead and say, yes, all of these things are going to be positive. And then, and positive takes care of real as well. Um, and then I'm also going to have uh, A, B, and uh, T. Actually, I'm also going to have omega up here, aren't I? So let's get that in. And these are sim dot symbols A, B, T. Those aren't necessarily going to be positive, so I always break them apart into separate lines so that I can only sort of set some of them as being positive. And then our expression, of course, will initially just be, um, so we got a sim dot exponential of minus beta times t times a times sim dot cosine of omega times t plus b times sim dot sine of omega times t. And just to make sure that looks OK, let's print it out. <laughs> oh my goodness, I forgot printing. Printing. There we go. Now it looks proper and pretty. All right. So now we can go ahead and we just need to solve this um, for A and B um, given our initial conditions. So how I would normally go about doing this is I'm going to use a, a solve statement and I'm going to call it like solves. I'm going to uh, I'm going to assign it to a variable. So then I have sim dot solve and I have two initial conditions, so I really need two equations. I'm going to need one equation for the position, which is what I currently have written here. And then I'm going to need another equation for the um, velocity. But I know the velocity is just the derivative of the position, and Simpy can do derivatives for me, so I can sort of do it all in one step, so to speak. So if I want to solve systems of equations, I need to plug that system in as a list into um, sim.solve. So as a list, I'm going to have first my position, so that's just x. By default, that would be, uh, simply I would assume that that's equal to zero. Um, I don't want it to be equal to zero. I want it to be equal to x naught. So I'm going to bring everything over to sort of the left-hand side, so to speak, so it'll equal zero. So that would be minus an x naught. And then I also need to solve for the velocity, which would look like x dot diff, so the derivative with respect to t minus v naught. Now, one thing I haven't done yet is that we're evaluating these both at time equals zero, because that's what our initial conditions are. So currently, these are just in respect with t, so we need to actually plug in that time is supposed to be equal to zero here as well. So the easiest way to do that is just to do subs t zero. And here as well, but make sure you do it here after you've taken the derivative. If you plug it in first, you're not going to have any time dependence to take a derivative of anymore. And that's it. Those are our two initial equations at this point. We've evaluated our position at time equals zero and its initial value. And we've evaluated now our velocity at time equals zero and its initial point. And then what values do we want to solve for? Well, we want to solve for a and B. And in particular, I'm going to add one other thing here, um, which makes it useful later on to sort of substitute these solutions back into our equation, which is I'm going to say dict equals true. And this basically will mean the sim.solve will return the solution in the form of another dictionary for us, which makes the substituting easy. And then we'll do some or solves. And I didn't test these numbers, so hopefully these is solvable. And it is. And in fact, it's just a simple single solution that we need to look at. All right. So at this point, what you'd really like to do is you say, I got my constants. I'd like to plug those back into the equation. And you could like write down these individual values and then plug them back in. But part of the reason with the dictionary it's really nice is I can literally just substitute this solves back into my x now. So if I do something along the lines of x dot subs, subs, and then I want to substitute solves in, 
And in particular, I want there's only one uh, solution in this case, so it might not matter. We'll see if this might give an error. It will not. That didn't do anything actually. So let's take the zeroth, the first and only solution in this case. There we go. And we can see that it went ahead and plugged in 10 for A, and it went ahead and plugged in all this jazz for B, which is mostly what we want. So this is almost what we need. But at this point, we'd probably like to go ahead and say, this is gonna be our final solution. We might as well plug in all of our constant values now. And this is where the sort of constants that we made earlier can come in handy because I can just make another substitution of consts and that's gonna plug beta in where beta is needed. K, well, K and M aren't showing up. Uh, omega in where omega is needed. And so now if we run this, we should consts, subs consts, we should see that it works and it didn't, which is unfortunate. So one sec here. Ah, okay. I was just a little bit sloppy here when I did this originally up here. I was rusty on doing this. Okay, so basically this is not substituting things in properly down here because these are strings up here and not the actual symbols that I've defined. Uh, so I can't really be quite as sloppy with just leaving these all be the same values. So what I'm gonna do real quick is just do like a val a val and a val for all of these. And that way down here, what I can do is grab all of this, put it down here, and then I'm gonna change these to vowels. Um, <clears throat> so that now, after I've defined my symbols, so these are all gonna be the senpai symbols as the keys over here. And then they're all gonna to correspond to the different values over here. And I probably need to fix this as well. All right, let's see, it gives us that, gives us that, gives us that, <clears throat> which is what we wanted now. All of our values have been plugged in. So now what we'd really like is we'd like to just be able to, we wanna plot this, right? Um, However, this is still a SymPy expression, and so it's not something that we can just immediately plot. And yes, you could retype it all, but there's all these giant decimals in here that you probably don't really want to type. And so what you can do is you can convert between SymPy expressions and NumPy expressions. Um, and to do so, what you need to do is you need to use something called LambdaFy. Um, you can usually make Lambda functions just in general in um, Python. So this is kind of SymPy's clever way of converting and basically saying, hey, we're gonna take a SymPy expression and lambdify it. We're gonna make it a Python expression. So it's actually quite simple how it works. Uh, I'm gonna give it a name, which I'm gonna call xnp uh, to remind myself that it's a, like a numpy function. And then it's just gonna be sim.lambdify, like so. Um, the first thing you need to plug into lambdify is the actual sort of variable that you would plug into your function, which in this case, we, you know, Everything's constants now except for t. t is the only time dependence we still have. So t is going to be our variable. Um, and then you need the actual function in question. So that's going to be all of this jazz. And then the last thing you need is it kind of has several different ways that it can convert the function. What we'd really like is it for to convert the function in a way that's going to be happy and play nice with numpy. So we're going to say numpy here to make sure it does things in that nice fashion. And if I run this, nothing is going to look like it happens, but I can test it now because if I do xnp and I just plug in some like arbitrary time, I should get a number out. And I do. If I get anything weird variable wise out, I would be in trouble at this point. So now we have the function for our x position in terms of something that matplotlib can understand. So we can go ahead and plot it at this point if we wanted to. Um, so let's, in this case, set up a series of times. So let's go from zero to 10 seconds by 0 0.01, say. And then I could plot this. So I can say blt.figure, fig size, make it a little bit bigger for the screen. 
And then just the plt dot plot. I want to plot times on my x-axis, and I want to plot x of mp evaluated at times on my y-axis. Build dot x label. We'll make time in seconds. And plt dot y label is uh, displacement in meters. In this case. Show. And it plots just like we would like it to, uh, with that decaying oscillations as we would expect it. So this is the way that I would normally approach these sorts of problems, um, is to sort of start in SymPy land, keep everything nice and SymPy and expression-y there, um, use dictionaries to make it easier to substitute in sort of the different expressions you find back into your initials. It saves a lot of typing. And then to get from your f sort of final expression into something that you actually want to use in NumPy, use lambdaFy, which again, you just pass it the variable that you sort of want to input in. And it can be more than one. If it's more than one, put them in like a little list, something like that. <laughs> um, the expression that you want to convert and then NumPy. And that'll let you quickly and easily convert from like calculations in SymPy into numeric calculations that you can then plot in um, Matplotlib. So hopefully that's useful and kind of gives you a better idea or streamlined idea of how you can go about approaching these problems in a way that's not quite as cumbersome. Cool. Thanks.